Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architectural Aesthetics and welcome to the second episode of my digital marker drawing series where I seek to improve my drawing skills by rendering some of the most iconic Canadian landmarks. In today's episode, we'll be looking at yet another of U of T's building, which is the Soldier's Tower, commemorating U of T alumni and faculty members who dedicated their lives to their country during the two world wars. Like many other historically male-centric institutions, U of T had seen her fair share of patriotic young men who committed their best years to the battlefield. To commemorate the 5,000 U of T members who fought in World War I, in 1918, the then President Sir Robert Faulkner proposed to erect a war memorial with the funds raised by the alumni. In his written proposal, he envisioned the memorial to be a beautiful structure, as fine as the architecture can make it, not too large, but a true memorial, worthy of the greatest event in the university's history. Moreover, the committee who were put in charge to oversee the project reached a consensus that the memorial ought to be both monumental and functional. From a U of T student's perspective, the end result satisfied every requirement Sir Faulkner raised and much more. Situated at the very heart of U of T's downtown campus, the Soldier's Tower sits quietly between the University College building and the Hart House. Designed by a local architecture firm, the memorial blends in perfectly with its two neighbors to present a united front with its Gothic Revival aesthetics. Because of the massiveness of its two adjacent buildings, the tower doesn't stand out, even though it's the second tallest war memorial in the country. However, the countless U of T students and pedestrians who walk around the campus intuitively understand the importance of the structure, as they have to walk through the memorial archway underneath the tower, which is a rather humbling experience. In addition to that, the tower's purpose is further insinuated by the memorial screen on the west side of the tower, which is inscribed with the names of the U of T members who died during World War I. On the northern side of the tower, an entrance leads up to the memorial room, a space that houses numerous totems of the war, ranging from medals, books, all the way to a German artillery. To accentuate the tower's Gothic Revival style, on the south facade is a 12-panel stained glass depicting imageries inspired by the Canadian poet John McCree's war memorial poem, In Flanders Fields. On the south and north facades of the tower, two ancient mechanical clocks insinuate the history and longevity of the university. In terms of the functional aspect of the memorial, inside of the tower there are 51 tuned carillon bells bought with the funds donated by various alumni. On special occasions, a musician would fill the king's circle with tranquil melodies by playing the bells via a keyboard console. Behind the memorial screen, red poppies thrive in the delicate memorial garden, which provides the visitors with a place for quiet reflections, adding more depth to the already well thought out memorial. Like I mentioned before, I appreciate the soldier's tower because of its unobtrusiveness. When it comes to memorials, sometimes it can be very tempting for the architects to imbue the work with their own egos and create something that are highly controversial, such as the Vietnam War Memorial designed by Maya Lin. Moreover, given that we're living in an era that is a few generations removed from any major warfare, a conspicuous war memorial could be easily misconstrued by some as inappropriate for an university campus. However, the Soldier's Tower benefited from the fact that it was designed by the same architects who designed its adjacent Hart House. Hence, it's able to subtly communicate a sense of solemnness to the thousands of students walking through it on a daily basis with its myriad features, while also blend in with the rest of the campus harmoniously by conforming to their architectural styles. This subtleness, to me at least, is very commendable, and it proves the point that you could elicit reverence and respect in people with subtle instead of extravagant design. Another thing I found out about the tower through research is that the university is very conscious of its deep history, and this is evident in the university's excellent documentation of everything about the tower. 
I appreciate this because history is the definitive attribute that differentiates U of T from any other younger colleges. It is obvious that as the younger schools are gaining more capital, they have been acquiring more real estates and commissioning more advanced facilities. However, history is the one thing that money just cannot buy. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you found the video to be informative. The drawing is still a work in progress, but I will finish it up in my personal time. Regarding more information about the tower, such as Carolyn recital schedules. I'll be linking them in the description box. And with that said, I'll see all of you in next week's video. Bye bye.